This is concept five notes, our last in our unit on energy flow, and we are gonna talk about cellular respiration. So I hope you have photosynthesis down by now because it could get a little confusing if not, because a lot of cellular respiration is really just almost the opposite of photosynthesis. But it's important that you understand the big picture. So remember, ultimate source of energy on Earth is the sun. We can't access that as consumers, so plants, which have chloroplasts, which has chlorophyll, are able to absorb sunlight and store, convert, and then store that light energy into chemical energy as glucose. Us consumers can eat plants, or we can eat other animals that have eaten plants, and access glucose um, or other carbs and lipids in um, the foods that we eat. And then we need to break down and convert that energy and glucose into a usable form called ATP, which we learned about in concept two. So that's the goal of cellular respiration. It's to convert chemical energy stored in the food that you eat, specifically we're gonna look at glucose, and convert it to chemical energy stored in the form of ATP, which is your cell's number one energy currency. Remember, think of the energy in the food you eat and the glucose as a check from your grandma and ATP is like cash. Both have value, but we want that cash for accessible energy. Remember, we will use carbs first for energy, but any food that you eat can be processed and broken down as a source of energy if needed. The chemical equation, which is like the recipe for cellular respiration, is C6H12O6 plus 6O2 makes six waters, six carbon dioxides, and real, um, energy in the form of ATP. Now, it's not making energy because we're not, we're just converting the form of energy, but oftentimes this can be included in the chemical equation. This might look familiar to you. That's because it's basically the opposite of your photosynthesis equation. So the ingredients of one are the results of the other. So again, reactions are ingredients. In cellular respiration, that's glucose and oxygen. So what you eat and what you breathe, that's our ingredients. The results are your products. Carbon dioxide that you breathe out, water that you pee out, and energy in the form of ATP for your cells to use. Um, it's technically not considered a product, so you don't necessarily need to write it in your equation. Um, in my class, I'm fine with it. Some teachers, if you're another, if you are watching this and some, you have a different teacher than me, um, they may not want you to write it, so just keep that in mind because it's technically, it's not a product, but it's being um, released. This is an exothermic reaction overall. Okay, so similarly to the chloroplast, the mitochondria has two main parts to it. It has a membrane part and a fluid part. The membrane part is known as the inner membrane. It's this folded up part. It's also known as cristae. And then the matrix, the mitochondrial matrix, is the fluid part that fills up the space around it. There's two main steps of cellular respiration. Each one happens in one of these parts. But there's also a pre-step, which we'll talk about. And that's called glycolysis. Okay, so this is step one. The first stage, or really not step one, I should say the pre-stage to anything going down is we're just going to break glucose in half. And that happens in glycolysis. So the purpose is to split glucose, which is a six carbon molecule, C6H12O6, six carbons, 12 hydrogens, six oxygens. We're going to split that in half into two three carbon molecules called pyruvates. Okay, that's what's going to go down. This occurs in the cytoplasm, so it's outside of the, or the mitochondria, just in, in the cytoplasm of the cell. It doesn't require any oxygen, so we say it's an anaerobic process. Anaerobic means you don't need oxygen to do it. Now, it makes four, it ch it's charging up four ATPs um, with energy, but it takes two ATPs to do the process, so it's a net of two ATPs total and then two NADHs. Remember I told you, there are other energy-carrying molecules besides ATP. ATP is just the main currency for the cell, um, but there are others. We talked about NADPH in photosynthesis. We're going to talk about NADH and FADH2 here, so you do need to keep track of these numbers. Okay, so after glycolysis, our little pre-stage where we just split glucose in half, the cell is going to make a decision. 
If it has an oxygen, it will go through aerobic respiration. If it does not have oxygen, it will go through anaerobic respiration, which is also known as fermentation to get energy. So we'll talk through each process. Okay, if oxygen is available, aerobic respiration. First step is the citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle, because that's the guy um, who came up with it or figured it out. So it happens in the mitochondrial matrix, so the fluid part of the mitochondria. And we're going to take those two pyruvate molecules from glycoly glycolysis, where we split the glucose in half, if you remember. We're going to chemically convert those in this cycle to make two ATP and some NADH and FADH2. So we're charging up these energy-carrying molecules with energy. And we're going to release CO2 as a waste product. The next step is the ETC, that electron transport chain. This is going to happen in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. It's a bunch of reactions. We're going to use electrons, that's what E minus is, and then the hydrogens formed in the Krebs cycle. And the main thing you understand here is we're going to charge up about 34 ATP, and then we're also going to make water when those hydrogens bond to oxygen. The most ATP that we get from cellular respiration happens through this ETC step. So that's really, really important. Okay, so think about it. What similarities did you see? There are so many. I really, really, really want you to stop now and do this on your own. On I believe it's like page 34 in your packet. There's a chart. I want you to think through all the different similarities. I want you to color code it. Um, I want you to look through those comparisons. I'm not going to go through this in incredible detail because I want you to do this on your own, but I think it's fascinating to see that overall photosynthesis is endo. We're taking in energy. Cellular respiration is exo. We're releasing energy. Notice the opposite equation. The reactants of photosynthesis are the products of cellular respiration and vice versa. The first step of photosynthesis is the ETC. The second step in cellular respiration is ETC. The ETC in photosynthesis splits water and makes oxygen. In cellular respiration, it uses oxygen and makes water. The second step of photosynthesis is the Calvin cycle. It's this, another cycle, the Krebs cycle, different guy, is the first step of cellular respiration. Calvin uses CO2 and makes glucose. Krebs uses glucose and makes CO2. So there's a lot of similarities and opposites that we got to get squared away. Now, I mentioned that sometimes we don't have oxygen available. That is when we will do anaerobic respiration, which is also known as fermentation. And there are two main types, lactic acid fermentation and alcohol fermentation. And we'll talk through both. So lactic acid fermentation. This occurs in some bacteria in animal cells, like your muscle cells. A pyruvate from glycolysis, so remember, glycolysis happens first, that pre-step where we take the glucase and split it in half into two pyruvates. Those pyruvates are going to get converted into lactic acid and ATP. But notice how little ATP we make. It's not a lot at all when we don't have oxygen. Alcohol fermentation happens in yeast when oxygen is not available. This is important for making bread and making, and making alcohol. We're going to take those pyruvates from glycolysis. We're going to make, break them down and make alcohol, carbon dioxide, and again, two ATP. So let's look at the summary of this. Aerobic respiration. You're, if it's a perfectly efficient process, which is a dream world, but if it was, you're getting about 36 to 38 ATP from one glucose molecule. Remember, we net two ATP from glycolysis, two from Krebs cycle, and about 34 from the ETC. Anaerobic, you're only getting like two to four. You're getting two net from glycolysis and then another two from either alcohol fermentation or lactic acid fermentation. So way, 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 way less energy. So we really need to have that oxygen available. Now, I love this. I know we did a chart earlier, but I just want to do one last little visual summary with you of photosynthesis versus cellular respiration. We got our chloroplast and our mitochondria. All right, photosynthesis absorbs light energy and CO2. And it's going to use CO2 to make glucose. And it's going to use water to make oxygen. Cellular respiration. We're going to use glu break glucose down into carbon dioxide. We're going to use oxygen and make water. 
and we're going to release energy in the form of ATP for the self to use. And it's a beautiful circle of life. And that is cellular aspiration. I hope this helps.